Georgia. Bay again, coming to you. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, the owner of the Chinese Acupuncture Clinic and the president of Dallas Traditions College of Chinese Medical Arts. Um, I want to thank you for joining me here tonight. Well, I guess it's still daytime now. I think when we started off um, seven weeks ago, it was night at this time, but this is uh, the eighth time we've met. And I started off just sharing what I felt the public and what all of you know our clients at the Chinese Acupuncture Clinic and anyone from Dallas Traditions wanted to hear about how to respond to COVID. And so uh, we've w been working with health and wellness through this time. And at this point in time, uh, today I want to share with you what we're going to be talking about tonight. We're going to be talking about um, uh, essential oils and my dear friend, Evelyn Roberts from San Francisco will be on uh, a little bit later and sharing her in-depth knowledge with uh, about essential oils. Um, I'm also going to be sharing about an eight-minute video of children's massage. And um, I think everyone uh, and in that children's massage, I'm going to be talking a little bit about upper respiratory infections and if you have a child who's having some abdominal discomfort. So all of that's going to be c coming up tonight. Um, I want to remind each of you that, as always, at the end of the night, uh, I'll be taking questions. And uh, I will also have uh, Evelyn with me, so she'll be able to answer questions also. So that'll be coming up at the end of the evening. So we'll all be here. Um, I have to tell you also something pretty funny happened today. For those of you who know me, um, 35 uh, years ago, when I moved here to Asheville, I made a decision to cut off a, you know, a tail I had, a ponytail at the back of my hair. And so what is there now has been growing since 1985. And it had gotten quite long. And today I was helping my grandson with leaf blowing. And I bent over the leaf blower to fix his backpack. And when I did, it grabbed my tail and I lost more than six inches. It's like somewhere between six and nine inches shorter because the engine of the uh, the engine of the leaf blower sucked in my tail and ate it to pieces. So uh, I'm not bald at least. So that's a good that's the good news. I thought I'd take out of that. Um, I want to talk about one thing with COVID before we uh, move on to the short video of the children's massage and then we bring in Evelyn. But the first thing I wanna talk about is we've had a few cases in the United States now um, with some children having some pretty bad reactions. And the truth is at this point, we do not know for sure if it is associated with COVID, but they're beginning to think there is some kind of a connection. It was first uh, pointed out in late April in the United Kingdom. And, you know, we've all been told that the things that we need to look for are difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, or pain or heaviness in the chest, or um, confusion, inability to be aroused, or blue lips and face showing a lack of oxygen. And those are great for adults. And I want you to think, this should take very little information space in your brain. But for those of us who are parents and grandparents, we just need to have a tiny little awareness of this because it does seem that it is impacting some children differently. And they're referring to it as pediatric multi-system inflammatory syndrome. And so I'm going to give you just three things and I'm going to suggest that 
if you have a child that comes up with something like this, that, you know, it's, it's worth looking at sooner than later. And we know when our children get fevers, they can go really high. A child's fever can spike up really high um, towards, you know, 103, 104 without that being much of a problem. But, you know, if you, have, if you use pharmaceuticals, which at this point I think everyone would because they would be a little nervous, I will also talk about some essential oils, um, I think that have helped with children's pediatric fevers. But, you know, if you look at um, a fever of 103 or 104 that does not respond to the anti-inflammatories you would normally give, you all know how your children respond to fevers. You know what a, natural, a, a normal fever is for your child. So the important thing is to always remember what does your child have if they have a fever. But these fevers, unfortunately, do not seem to respond to anti-inflammatories like children's Tylenol or Advil, any of, the, any of the normal things that you would be given a child to bring down a fever. If they're not responding to those pharmaceuticals, and in the past your child always has, that's a key figure, okay? The second thing, what they're seeing with children is that their eyes get very, very red. Like some people have said that they have double conjunctivitis. Other people have just said that the whites of the eyes become extremely red and inflamed. That's another thing, you know. So, you know, if both eyes are very red. And, you know, the other things are things that all children generally tend to have oftentimes, sore throat, swollen lymph glands. But the difference is here that if you do lab work, these children have elevated C-reactive proteins and really highly elevated white blood counts. So I don't want all of you to just get very, very distraught and, you know, be watching your children with every breath they take for the next year. But keep it in your head. Children's fever generally responds to treatments, whether it's acupuncture, essential oils, or, or anti-inflammatory pharmaceuticals. They're generally going to respond. If they're not responding to that, I'm going to suggest that we follow up quickly. Okay, so, you know, those are just, it's a few things. And again, it's too early to tell for sure if this is related to COVID, but they're starting to think it might, and they're starting to look at all of the, you know, deaths of children recently because they're feeling that maybe some of those were also COVID related. At this point in time, there's really no way to know. But I did want you to know a couple of symptoms like that because by knowing that, you know, you can just keep it in the back of your head, okay? So adults, we're looking at fevers, a dry cough, blue lips, blue face, you know, all of the things, you know, a lack of, you know, cognition that's normal. With children, we're looking at fevers that are not being impacted by pharmaceuticals. They're not, they're not your children's normal fever. They may have conjunctivitis in both eyes. They definitely would be having a sore throat and sometimes swollen lymph glands. So I want you to be aware of all of those. Um, I did a short video. Let's see how to do it. Okay, folks, I'm going to start showing you how we're going to do a little bit of massage because with all of our children, the spine right here, walking down the spine, you see how... I'm just walking down with my two little fingers on each side. Walking down his spine is going to activate his yang chi. And the yang chi oftentimes has to do with our chi that basically is our immune system. Now, if we were looking at places where everything is um, associated with the lungs, that's going to be here from the base of his neck right down to about 
his bottom of his shoulder blade. So if your child gets sick, you're going to take like an essential oil, maybe in a little bit of coconut oil, which I have right now. A great one if the child's sick would be to use a little bit of bay oil and eucalyptus. Eucalyptus helps to bring things up and out. And when children have an upper respiratory infection, we want to bring it up and out. So I could take just my two fingers and put them right here at this point that has to do with the fever, dies we, and stroke down. <laughs> and it's a little ticklish, as you can hear from my grandson, but just stroking down here, right from the, up at the top of his neck, all the way down to the bottom. Now, now whenever I'm gonna really recommend that one of the best things you can do to have a connection with your children. We all have connections when they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. By the time they're twelve, sometimes they start having a little bit of problem and they really don't want us, as they hit puberty, touching them as much. And so what I when you see that happen, it's a real easy transition. Instead of working up on their back where they might feel a little more uncomfortable, you move right down to their feet. Now, I'm going to pick up his foot to show you kidney one is located right here in the bottom of his foot. So when I'm massaging my children's feet at night, you're just going to take and pump that. You know, you just push and it's not like you're doing something that's really going to hurt them. It's just a gentle, gentle pumping. Then stretch out the toes, stretch out the toes. Always work around the ankles. Put your whole hand right around here and press right by this tendon here. This is the Achilles tendon, but these meridians here on the outside is the urinary bladder meridian. And the one on the inside here is the kidneys. And the kidneys are the root of life in Chinese medicine. So just stroking down on both of these sides and again pumping at kidney one. Stretching out, stretching out, stretching out, stretching out. I can promise you, if you have children who are older, five minutes at night just you touching their feet and massaging them will make a difference as they grow older. They'll be comfortable most of the time with you massaging their feet. But it, it does happen that there comes a time where maybe they're not as comfortable as you massaging their back. So that's one thing. Now, thank you, Sue. I'm going to take this all and put it back on your back again. So I showed you what we do if we have a child that has a little respiratory. The other thing is you can do guasa. Can I do guasa? Let me grab a guasa spoon if I have one. Oh, there's one in the um, bedroom. I know there's one in the bedroom and the big shelf where all the other things are. Where? Um, you know the shelf with all the things? The shelf with the laundry stuff? No, 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 no. With like the presents and stuff. Oh. Okay, I'll just use it. Chopsticks? You could even take a you could even take a simple spoon, a regular spoon. It's but it's gonna be cold. Ah. <laughs> and on either side of the spine, massage down. Either side. And what would happen here is if he had a fever, it would start getting really red along the side. Now, he's pretty, pretty healthy, so there's no fever here. And so just as I'm scraping here, you, ba you barely see anything. Now, what would happen... I want you to turn over. But don't slide down. Just turn over so I can see you better. Yes, yeah. So if you have a child at night, who's less than a year, they could be having colic. And so what you do is right at the umbilicus, you go up here until you feel these bones here, 
Okay, once you get to the bottom edge of the rib and you circle around, and if you ah. see this, I'm just circling around ah. and massaging his belly. Now, that's really soothing. You want to put a little bit of pressure on it, mm. but not a lot, just a little bit of pressure circling around. Now, the essential oils you'd be using here would be something like uh, ginger, lavender, and even maybe sometimes a little bit of cinnamon. But ginger and lavender are the two main herbs for a child that's colicky. If you have a child who tends to have a problem with constipation, the same thing, and you can see that I'm going in the shape of a clock. Midnight, three, six, nine, noon. That's always this, that's the uh, circle, that's the direction you always want to be moving here. So, one other thing that's really important is if your child has a fever, all of you probably know this point right here, hogu. And this point is very, very good for opening up the lungs. <laughs> opening up the lungs. And all I'm doing here is taking and massaging a little bit. You can see that. <laughs> okay. Is my hair tickling you? Okay. Now let's see the other one. Okay. Now, just for a quick review, if there's a lung infection, if they have a respiratory infection or a cough, you're going to work on the back. One other place that's really good is <laughs> right up here. On, uh, these actually, if you can quit giggling, okay, my little giggle boy, these points here are actually <laughs> lung one and lung two. So you could put these. It's right <laughs> below the scapula, right at the shoulder. But obviously, I'm not going to be able to show you that because he's too ticklish there. Mm. So we've talked about the back, and the essential oils for that would be, um, the essential oils for the back would be eucalyptus and bay laurel, particularly if they had a fever. If there was a very high fever, you could keep blue chamomile at home and blue chamomile on the bottom of the feet will oftentimes bring a, a baby's fever down. So blue chamomile, keep that for fevers. And uh, eucalyptus and bay laurel, if they're having, you know, respiratory infection. And if they're having stomach issues, maybe they have some constipation or maybe it's a baby with colic, I'm gonna recommend ginger, lavender, those are the two primary. Sometimes fennel might even be added in there. So those are the, a couple of essential oils for children's massage. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on my friend Evelyn Robert, and my daughter's going to bring Evelyn up. And the wonderful thing about Evelyn is she's opened a company, Alchemical Bat botanicals that are essential oils that are dedicated to Chinese medicine. It's the first and only essential oil company in the United States that deals with um, essential oils based on Chinese herbal medicines. And I believe Evelyn is here on with me now. Is that correct, Evelyn? I am here. Okay, it's nice to hear you. Thank you for coming. I'm going to let you go ahead and start your presentation now, and then I'll be back with you folks to talk about children a little bit later. Well, hi, uh, it's great to be here with you this evening, and thank you, Sissy, for inviting me. I am, as Sissy said, the founder of Alchemica Botanica TCM Essential Oils an essential oil company dedicated to providing oils made from traditional Chinese medicine herbs. I want to share with you how these oils can help with wellness and health maintenance and how this pertains specifically to COVID-19 virus prevention. TCM or traditional Chinese medicine essential oils combine the magic 
of aromatherapy with the deep and abiding thousands of years of wisdom of Chinese herbal medicine. When an herb is, is extracted or distilled to make an essential oil, some wonderful things happen that make essential oils different than decocted or cooked uh, dried herbs. First is aroma and its effect on the mind. Second is the concentrated Jing essence of the plant is contained in the oil. And third, an array of chemical components with numerous medical medicinal properties become available. About aroma, or think about when you're having a lousy day and you see a rose in full bloom. The sight of it bringing its visual beauty into your eyes already lifts your spirit. And then when you take a whiff and bring the chi of the rose, the molecules of that scent coming from the rose through your nose, along sensory pathways and into your brain, they start flipping switches that change mood and brain chemistry, which then begins to influence the workings of the body. Another important thing to know about aroma is that when a plant exudes an aroma, it acts as the way or protective chi of the plant. Its job is to ward off pests and disease like our immune system. So when you inhale the plant's wei chi, it circulates to your wei chi by the breath entering the lungs through your nose. The lungs are the first line of defense against disease. The lung qi and yin support the integrity of the skin, which acts as a barrier and a means to expel a pathogen by sweating it out. And the lung qi initiates the immune response to disease mechanisms that originate from outside the body, like a flu virus. The oily substance of an essential oil, called jing yo in Chinese, is the jing essence of the plant. This Jing essence is the source of the prenatal building blocks of life, the foundation of our constitution stored in the kidneys and distributed through the body as Yuan, source Qi. When we apply a Jing Yo, an essential oil on the body, the complete nature of that plant, including its medicinal properties, are absorbed through the skin and especially if it is applied onto certain acupuncture points, like source points and points of the eight extraordinary meridians, it reaches the level of our Jing essence and circulates to the Yuan source Qi in our bodies, influencing and supporting our constitution. So strong Wei Qi and lungs, along with strong Yuan Qi and kidneys, are essential for wellness and health maintenance. The many chemical components contained within essential oils are also something useful to consider. When we are dealing with something like this virus, it's good to know that all essential oils have some antimicrobial, antipathogenic properties based on their chemical constituents, like antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, mucolytic, anti-cancer, etc. And some essential oils are stronger against a particular type of pathogen, like a virus. Diffusing those essential oils into the air is a great way to rid the environment of virus and to benefit the lung chi and the respiration by breathing them in. They can be diffused, as single oils or in combination. My favorite combination lately and the one that I'm in, I've been diffusing in my clinic is a combination of zi su ye, or perilla leaf, and song jen, pine needle. The zi su ye, the perilla leaf, is a really good preventative uh, oil during cold, flu, and allergy seasons. It's antiviral and anti-inflammatory. It treats upper respiratory infections, coughing, wheezing, asthma, and allergies. 
And it's also good for digestive dysfunction, like nausea and vomiting, as in the case of a flu that affects the digestion. And it boosts immunity and tonifies the chi. The pine anchors the lung chi to the kidney and opens the breathing passages for upper respiratory infections, coughing, wheezing, difficulty breathing, phlegm and congestion. It's also a good disinfectant. It's antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal. It strengthens the lung and the immune system. It supports the adrenals and stimulates underactive thyroid, which is also important for the immune system. Another good combination of oils to diffuse might be uh, huaxiang, which is patchouli, and a citrus called jirka, it's uh, citrus orantium. And together with uh, nanmu, cedar wood, this combination of three essential oils is preventative for upper respiratory infections. It's strongly antiviral, antibacterial, transforms dampness, breaks up mucus and phlegm congestion. So to uh, support the immune system and strengthen the constitution, applying certain essential oils to acupuncture points and taking them by internal ingestion, always diluted, is going to be the most effective. I'd like to introduce you to an Alchemica Botanica blend, which is formulated to help with wellness and health maintenance. It's called Immune and Adrenal Boost, which translates in Chinese medicine terms as strengthening the lung with its whey protective qi and the kidney with its yuan source qi. Plus this blend is warming for the kidney yang which provides the pilot light to cook or break down our food, supporting the spleen, stomach, and digestion. Specifically to address the COVID-19 virus, which by its nature initially is a cold, damp pathogen, right? Flu season is winter, when the weather tends to be cold and damp. So if we modify our internal environment, then we are not good hosts for the virus. So this blend is warming and spicy. Three of its ingredients are also commonly used as kitchen spices, not only because they add flavor to food, but because they are digestives. They aromatically transform dampness and strengthen digestive function which is the source of postnatal qi and blood. The three spices in this blend are ganjiang, ginger, dingxiang, clove, and huluba, fenugreek. All three are used in Chinese medicine to warm and tonify the kidney and spleen yang. So ginger root also warms the lung for cough and congestion, and it's a good expectorant. It is also one of the highest antioxidant essential oils, and it's been shown to elongate shortened telomeres, a factor in anti-aging. Clove is also interesting for one of its chemical components. Um, clove oil contains over 80% eugenol, and eugenol is considered to be anti-aging because it is shown to protect against DNA damage by free radicals and to benefit the immune system by boosting white blood cells. It has been the focus of a great deal of research. Its powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties have been shown to be effective anti-cancer agents as well. And fenugreek essential oil also has an interesting chemical component called trigonaline which is a plant hormone that has regulatory functions which help plants with survival and growth, which are functions that are of jing essence. And then the three other ingredients in this blend are yunxian, or black spruce, which opens the lung. Um, it's for treating congestion, cough, wheezing, difficulty breathing. It helps to the kidneys to grasp the lung qi. It also warms the kidney yang and helps to recover from adrenal exhaustion. 
It's a cortisone-like essential oil. It's anti-inflammatory and analgesic, as well as antimicrobial and antioxidant. Then in the blend is Wadza Shizandra, which consolidates and nourishes the kidney yin and essence and benefits qi. It's a restorative oil, generates fluids. It helps the kidney to anchor the lung qi. And then we have one more essential oil called Chuan Shong Ligusticum Walichi, which frees the movement of blood and qi. It moves the blood to expel wind. Modern research into this uh, chemical composition of this oil shows that it potentiates the immune system. It increases blood cell production and enhances the response of qi tonics. And the carrier oil for this blend, uh, there are two carrier oils. One is uh, organic sesame seed oil, and then there's black cumin seed oil. Um, cumin, cumin is really interesting because uh, um, numerous uh, research studies have shown that black cumin has anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-cancer, and, and immune enhancing properties. And then to further enhance this blend in response to the virus epidemic, we also made uh, an enhanced blend called Immune Plus. We took our immune and adrenal boost blend and added Huang Qi astragalus essential oil to further boost the immune system. Huang Qi astragalus, you might know, you might be familiar with, it's one of the tonifying herbs in the Jade Screen formula. It's a powerful tonic. It strengthens the righteous Qi and raises the Yang Qi. It tonifies also the Wei defensive Qi. It's restorative for conditions that have severely weakened the body, and it's preventative for chronic recurring illnesses due to qi deficiency. It fortifies the spleen qi and the spleen yang, uh, and it's, which means it strengthens digestion and absorption. And then we also made one more blend uh, for this kind of situation, which is sort of just calling the all-in-one blend, which combines all of these ingredients that I just talked about, but it's using uh, Linger uh, Ganoderma spore oil as the carrier, which is a nutritional oil, and um, it's one of the most powerful immune tonics. It's highly prized for thousands of years to prevent and treat serious illnesses, including cancers, and to promote longevity. It's also antiviral, antibacterial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and uh, glucose, serum glucose regulating. So finally, uh, because we know that wellness is a state of mind as much as, if not more than, a purely physical state, and that stress and fear can injure the kidneys and interfere with the immune system, Using essential oils that calm the mind and the emotions is vital. So one of my favorite ways to use essential oils for this purpose is in the bath, or you can just wear them as a perfume. And floral essential oils are wonderful for this. Each of them with their own unique and beautiful aromas that are transcendental. They nourish the yin essence of the body and inspire feelings of safety, beauty, love, and connection to the, vine, the divine. One of these floral oils, Jin Yin Hua, which is a honeysuckle, is a major ingredient in the Yin Chao formula. You've probably heard of it. It's a popular tablet for colds and flus. It has a heavenly scent, but also cleans toxins, and it's antiviral. So my favorite bath oils these days are the Jin Yin Hua, the honeysuckle, and also combining that with an oil called Baidzeren, which is biota seed, which is uh, uh, in the category of nourishing the heart and calming the spirit. It's stabilizing and pacifying. It's really good for insomnia, but it also benefits the qi and nourishes the blood. Some other florals that we have available for this are jasmine, rose, and magnolia, for example. 
So I hope that you have found this information helpful for keeping you healthy and happy during these times. All of these essential oils and blends that I mentioned and lots of information are available on the website, alchemicabotanica.com. Thanks so much for listening. Back to you, Sizzy. Thank you, Evelyn. Evelyn, thank you so much for sharing with us. I'd like for you to stay on for a few minutes. Um, I've, I've, I've had quite a bit of uh, difficulty since I'm such a techno person uh, downloading this video, and I'm trying to get that done. Maybe while... Sissy is working on her technical issues at the moment. Uh, I know that she's having connectivity problems. That's, of course, one of the downsides of living up on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. Uh, maybe we could take questions at this point, if anyone has questions that might be specifically for Evelyn. Are there, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Hey, are there any oils that you would not recommend for someone in early pregnancy? Yeah, usually uh, we don't use oils that would tend to vitalize the blood too much. Um, but, you know, we also have to consider that often we're diluting these oils and, and the effect may not be terribly, terribly strong. But those are ones that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. And then also um, oils that contain um, certain types of uh, chemical components, uh, specifically uh, ketones which um, some of which, not all of them, but some of which can be a little bit toxic if they're not used properly. They have to be really diluted. Uh, so, so those are the things, but there aren't, uh, there aren't many really that you would really need to stay away from, especially the way that we use them uh, generally is to dilute them. And we're not using a ton. And often we're not maybe most often, we're not taking them internally anyway. Um, we're using them on acupuncture points or just using them for aroma, in which case they wouldn't be so uh, easy to be dangerous. Thank you. Uh, sure. Thank you, Evelyn. There's another question that came in, um, which is how can I know what are the appropriate acupuncture points to apply the oils onto? Is there a guide for self-application? I think this is why you go to your acupuncturist. But, um, you know, I, uh, I, all I can say about that is I, I'm working on a book. And the book uh, will be partly a Materia Medica and that of essential oils. And that Materia Medica will also have treatment stat strategies that include acupuncture points. And then after that, you know, you would just need to uh, look at a an acupuncture meridian map and uh, see where those points are. But I do think um, it's good to have someone teach you where the points are. And I think that would be your acupuncturist. I had a question. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I tried to put it in chat, but I'm not, don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I have heard that some essential oils can be dangerous to pets as far as diffusing them. Don't you have to be careful what you would use in that respect? Yeah, so these again are oils that contain uh, a lot of, you know, or a high percentage of uh, ketone, um, especially uh, chemical components. And so, you know, um, it's, uh, you can look these things up. I mean, even, you know, on the internet, um, looking at the components of certain essential oils, you can always also ask me. Um, but, you know, uh, many people say that uh, eucalyptus is not good for uh, cats. Um, some other oils probably too. But anything with uh, ketones or a lot of ketones, we don't use around kitties. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure.
so Jeannie, I've unmuted myself to come back in, but it seems like every time I come in today, it um, kills the internet for me. So um, Evelyn, you were talking about um, the lungs and I didn't get to hear most of your talk because I was knocked off of the internet during that time. But um, would lung nine and kidney three be two points that you would have suggested? Because I didn't hear, I heard you talking about lung and kidneys and then I was gone. Yeah, for, for strengthening the lung and the kidney, those are the two uh, source points for those uh, meridians oh. and for those organs. And, and that would be a great place to, to put the oils, you know, to apply them on the, on the skin for them to go to that, you know, UN source uh, level and help to, to strengthen. So I'm going to demonstrate that on the inside here, right at the wrist crease, this is considered lung nine. And so this would be one point to strengthen the lungs. It's the source point of the lungs. And then I'm going to demonstrate kidney three would be, here's the internal malleolus, the, um, <laughs> the tendon here that just ran out of my head. The Achilles, the Achilles tendon, and the yeah. halfway point between these two is kidney three. So you find All right, it looks like she's having uh, technical difficulties again. So Evelyn, I'm, I'm going to give this a shot and you let me know if I've got it right. Yeah. So again, on the foot, if you find the bone, you find the Achilles tendon, and then you find the point that's halfway in between. Does that look good? Yeah, yeah. that's kidney three. That's the source okay. point. There's your kidney. kidney three. Yeah. And then again, the lung was up on the hand. Yeah. Right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And it looks like we have Sissy back with us. I'm on yes. Jennifer's computer now, so um, we'll see if that will work better. Um, and I'm not sure what that is above there. Jennifer, can you move that? So basically I wanted to show you lung uh, nine and kidney three, which are two really important places to put essential oils. As far as um, my movie, it's obviously gonna be uploaded on the internet. I did see a number of people on you who were parents who were signing in for this to specifically be able to um, learn this video, learn these massage techniques. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share a couple of things with you. Um, the essential oils that I was mentioning for if your child has a respiratory infection to do over the spine, which you will see when you watch that video. You know, again, this would be in a blend and you would be using almond oil. And if you had like an ounce of almond oil, then you could do like uh, six to seven drops of eucalyptus in it. And maybe three to four drops of bay oil, particularly if they have a lot of phlegm uh, and, you know, a fever. So just those two with a little bit of pine because pine strengthens the lungs to help to move something out. So those three essential oils in an ounce of almond oil would be what I would use on your child's back or else in coconut oil, either one of those. And then uh, I also showed an abdominal massage and the essential oils, if you have an infant who is experiencing a lot of problems with colic or even an older child, the two essential oils I'm really gonna recommend here are ginger and lavender. And part of that is because the ginger uh, helps with the digestion, but the lavender also helps to calm the spirit. And so those are two essential oils I'd use on the belly for when you're watching that video, if you go to watch that. Are there any other questions for Evelyn or for myself about um, what we've discussed today, knowing that for whatever reason, I couldn't play the video.
I'm going to assume that's a no, Jeannie, because I can't see anything. Yes, I, I'm not seeing any more questions coming up, up right you now. Know, and uh, uh, Sissy, yes. I might, I might, I might say uh, a couple of words about um, taking um, taking uh, essential oils. This particularly this blend that I discussed, the immune and adrenal uh, blend, taking uh, essential oils um, for internal ingestion Thank um, you. because I uh, you know I'm using this blend every day in that way I'm taking this um, immune and adrenal blend and just uh, adding uh, three drops of it to um, a third of a teaspoon of that um, linger of that uh, nutritional oil the Ganoderma oil and that's my that's my immune tonic <laughs> That's the thing that I'm using for prevention. So, um, you know, I think this, uh, some of these oils are really, really useful to take internally as well, but a very, very little. So, and we're talking about already a, a blend that's diluted in carrier oils. So this, this blend is uh, 6% essential oils to, you know, uh, carrier oil. And then um, even further uh, diluting that is what I'm doing by putting it into the linger, the nutritional oil. But I think it's super useful sometimes to be able to take essential oils internally in small, small doses. Thank you. Um, just so people understand, um, I sent home someone with an essential oil to use this last week. And with the blend I gave them, it was one drop and it was to be put into a tablespoon of an, uh, coconut oil, okay? Because coconut oil is easy, you know, usually for people to digest and so, but it's one drop and it was two times a day. So when we're talking about small doses, we're talking about a drop. I want you to know, we're not talking about a small dose of a quarter teaspoon. We're talking about one drop. Okay, just you know, want to share that with you. Um, so, can we also just reiterate that for anything particularly that's going to be taken internally, it absolutely has to be medical grade. Oh yes, and um, I'm gonna. I tell people all the time at my office, if you go to a health food store and you buy something that's been organically raised and it says organically raised, that does not mean it's safe. Okay, that does not tell you how it was extracted. Evelyn, did you tell them the difference between uh, solvents are used to extract most of the essential oils that you see? Okay, and so if you're taking an essential oil and it doesn't matter how it was grown, if it was extracted with solvents. Can you talk a little bit, Evelyn, about the difference in the essential oils that we consider medical grade? And so that may be a big difference, uh, you know, if you're diffusing it, that, you know, that's going to be okay, but you certainly don't want to be putting those on your skin and certainly never swallowing. Yeah, and, and I think, um, unfortunately, sometimes it's difficult to know, um, you know, if you just buy something off the shelf, um, exactly, you know, how it's been processed. Um, but generally, you know, um, good quality from a, um, from a reputable uh, distillery um, of an essential oil that's, that's steam distilled doesn't need to have a solvent. Um, and then there's another process called uh, CO2, which is a little bit more modern, but it's a, a wonderful process. It just uh, uses pressure and even not heat, and it also doesn't need a solvent. You know, solvents are usually used for, um, you know, absolutes and, uh, you know, um, concretes, what we call concretes. So this is a different type of extraction. So you want to make sure that it's, you know, steam distilled or CO2 extracted and just from a, a reputable uh, factory and, you um, you know, and supplier. Thanks, Evelyn. Yeah, I, I just tell people that unless, 
unless they purchased them from someone that they know that they're medical grade, that you shouldn't do anything except diffuse them into the air. You just don't use them topically or internally. And I really uh, appreciate you coming tonight, Evelyn, particularly since I was knocked off for most of this. But I will get I will get to listen to it later once Paul puts it up on the internet for us. And it again, they all get put up on the Chinese Acupuncture Clinic. There's a site there that you can click that will take you directly to all of them. I want to tell you a little bit about next week, Joe Hollis, who is a master gardener and grower of Chinese herbs and is one of the most well-known people here in the United States that has been growing Chinese herbs for many, many years. Joe Hollis will be with us next week. And what he's gonna discuss is Taoism and the roots of Taoism and plants. And the roots of basically, we've all been sequestered in our homes. And I know it's changed all of us in some way. All of us have slowed down our lives and what Joe wants to talk about is Taoism and be slowing down and how the priest oftentimes went to the mountains and that was partly to slow down their lives. So I think Joe will be uh, very interesting next week to have a discussion about the Taoist roots of slowing down. And that's what we'll be talking about next week. You know, I try to bring up a little bit every week about where we are. I know that, you know, all of you know at this point that the surgical, the masks that are called N95 really protect you and they have the, um, I forgot the word. Evelyn, help me out here. Um, I mean, the thing that makes it stick to your face? Yeah, that, that makes you have a rash by the end of the day from where, yeah. you know, and you can't, um, my I have feel rash. The filters. Ah, yes, the filters. Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I would really recommend that you do that. And if you have a cloth mask, you can take and put a filter into that. They talk about even a thin paper towel slid into that really does help to filter even more. Of course, when it filters more, it makes it a little bit more difficult to breathe. But I'm going to really recommend be people wear a mask, okay, to protect yourself and to protect others. And if you have, you know, at some point, the hardware stores would start getting back more of the masks that people used, even when they were like sanding floors. And, you know, check out your hardware stores because even those, anything that has a tight seal that goes over your nose and around under your chin and um, is going to be really helpful. So I really want everybody to really make sure you do that. I look forward to having Joe Hollis with us next week. Evelyn, thank you so very, very much for sharing with us tonight. And as always, it's wonderful to see you. And um, thank you all for coming. And we'll be here same time next week. Bye-bye.